All right, what is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. So if you guys have been following the channel for a while, you know how much I harp on reliability and longevity of these cars. Now with that, we are talking about one of my favorite topics and it is longevity parts. Thank you. That is right, we are talking about longevity. So when it comes to longevity of these cars, there are some modifications that you can do to really improve the lifespan of the EJ engine and the FA engine. Now, as we're going through this list, we're gonna talk about what the modifications are, what they do, how they benefit the engine, um, some of my recommended brands and the pricing for those brands. And uh, we're really gonna cover this topic. Uh, I really haven't gone too much in depth in the past about specifically the longevity modification part uh, we have talked about just the broad spectrum of the longevity aspect and keeping the cars reliable. But with that, I mean, let's just jump into it and start going over these longevity parts. Okay, so the first one on our list, which I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about before, is going to be an air oil separator. So what an air oil separator actually does is it takes the oil vapor that builds up inside of that PCV system, and instead of pushing that oil vapor back into the intake track, it utilizes those three ventilation ports and it sucks all of that, well, it doesn't really suck, but it does pull that vapor into the air oil separator, where it is then spun around very violently in a way that separates out the oil from the air. Now, it uses gravity and that oil is going to end up sinking to the bottom of that air oil separator where then the oil is put back into the system. Now if you don't run an air oil separator and you are on a modified car what you can risk is that oil vapor building up inside of your intake track and then being pushed through that intake track through the turbo through the intercooler piping and into the engine. Now once the fuel atomizes inside of the cylinder it's also mixed with some of that air oil vapor and that's going to end up reducing the octane rating of your fuel which will then lead to detonation and or knock whatever you prefer to call it inside of your engine base. So getting that air oil separator on the car is a huge benefit to be able to reduce that knock and keep that octane rating at its peak for your car. Now, some of the key brands that I suggest you guys going with are IAG and Crawford. Both of those are big air oil separator guys out there who are doing an awesome job with it. Now you are gonna see some other competitors out there who sell air oil separators who don't actually run coolant through their AOSs. Now one of the benefits with the IAG and the Crawford is it does run coolant through the AOS. Now the point of that is it's gonna keep the inside of that air oil separator the same temperature as the engine. And that's gonna be important so that it boils off or evaporates any water that's built up inside of that air oil separator or any that might be condensing inside of the PCV system. And you don't want water mixing with your fuel either because you guess it just, it doesn't look good and I think we all know what that looks like. So you can pick up the IAG one for I believe around $399 and you can pick up the Crawford one for about $330. I've ran both of them before and both are solid choices to use. Both of them are pretty much the exact same install. Uh, just pick what brand you like, but get yourself an air oil separator if you don't already. So next mod on our list is going to end up being that cylinder four cooling mod. So when I posted the install video on that cylinder four cooling mod that we did on the STI, uh, I got a lot of questions from people asking if they should install it on their car. Was it an easy install? Overall, the install was easy on it, and I highly recommend it for anyone who is EJ based. You do not need this part if you have an FA engine. The FA engine's cooling system is superior to the EJ, so you don't need to worry about that. Now the issue with the EJ is you tend to get a lot of hot spots in cylinder four from inadequate cooling. So what this does is it connects to the back of the block on the left cylinder head and it connects up to the heater core hose line. Now what that does is it uses reverse cooling to feed coolant into cylinder number four and filling those coolant jackets a little more sufficiently so that way you can reduce the detonation and or knock in cylinder four which is in turn going to improve the longevity of your car obviously reduced knock is going to be beneficial so the part's about 79 dollars i do recommend getting the get a dom tune one uh just because he's been a huge support in the community answering questions and if you guys want i will link that uh cylinder four cooling mod install up here so that way if you guys want to check back over to it you can uh, but down in the comment section of that video dominic actually jumped in there and answered a lot of the questions that people had so if you do want a little more clarity you can jump over there and then I'll also put a link down in the description that shows the hot spot differences between having the cylinder for a cooling mod and not having it so the next part on our list is going to be the header now if you are 
unfamiliar with Subarus or you want to learn more, Subarus come with an unequal length header. That means the runners coming off of two of the ports have a longer distance to travel than on the opposite side. So because of that, that's why you get that, that rumble, but I don't need to explain that to you guys. I'm sure all of you know that. But what you might not know is the unequal length header, because of it, it does have a tendency to increase the amount of knock or detonation that you're getting inside of your block. Now, because two of the ports have longer runners than the other side, it's gonna take that exhaust gas longer to travel to the collector and then up the up pipe to the turbo. It is going to increase the chance of knock and detonation in cylinders two and four, which are on the driver's side. And because of that, uh, we just, we don't want that to happen. To avoid that, equal length headers are a great way to go. So with equal length headers, you don't always lose the Subaru Rumble rumble like everyone thinks you do. I have run equal length headers on all of my past Subarus and this one will also be on equal length headers here soon. And it still has a little bit of that Subaru rumble to it, but just remember that the equal length is going to be better for longevity of the car. Now with that equal length header, you are also gonna see a little bit better top end power out of the car too. So it's a win-win, increase the longevity and pick up a little more top end power. Now the two brands that I would suggest using for this, they're, uh, they are both more expensive, but uh, they're quality parts and quality brands. I do suggest the Killer Bee Holy Header as everyone would love. Um, I want one that's just very expensive, so. Gotta save up for that. And then the other one is going to be the ETS, um, the ETS equal length header, both of which are very expensive, but both very high quality brands. I have run some other equal length header brands in the past and have ran into issues with them. Um, with the Killer B, I have ran it once before and everything was a-okay with it. But that is going to keep us moving through this and we're gonna jump into our next part. So the next part I have for you guys is gonna be some of the oiling stuff. So when it comes to the EJ, especially some of the early models, you can have problems with your OEM oil pickup. Now right down here along the welds of where the tube connects to the actual pickup, um, you can have that crack. Ask me how I know, it's happened to me. So on my old 07 STI, I had this tube crack and because of that, it starved the engine of oil. And uh, as a result, I ended up spinning a bearing in the car, I ended up selling it and it was just, it was a whole mess. So this isn't a modification that isn't too bad on some of the newer STIs, but if you do have one of the older ones, especially some between that 06 and 07 range, I do highly suggest swapping out this oil pickup. But if you are in there swapping out that oil pickup, you might as well at least swap out the windage tray and if you can afford it, the oil pan. So essentially the increased material thickness of the aftermarket ones is much superior to those OEM ones. Now with that, if you are going up in there and you are swapping out that oil pickup, you might as well swap out that windage tray. And if you can afford it, swap out that oil pan. It is a real pain to be able to get up in there and swap those out multiple times. Uh, if you've never done it before and you're kind of curious, I'll link up here another video of when I did my oil pan, oil pickup and windage tray on this car, just so you guys can kind of see how much of a, uh, a pain it actually is to do. And when it comes to brands on those oiling components, uh, I really suggest Killer B. Uh, you can pick up their whole oil kit, which is the pan, the oil pickup and the windage tray for about $600. Uh, ETS, I believe it was, no, IAG also just released one. I don't know how good it is, but it looks pretty quality to me. So, I mean, if anyone's ran it or if anyone is running it, feel free to drop down below in the comments what you think of it and uh, if it is comparable to the Killer B setup. Now, the last modification I have for you guys is going to be a larger radiator. Now, the OE radiator, there's absolutely nothing, nothing wrong with it. But if you do want to just help improve that longevity and pull a little bit more stress off of your car, I do suggest swapping over to either a Mishimoto or a Koyo radiator. So it's not going to be that a larger radiator is going to keep your car cooler. It's just going to be that the larger radiators, radiator is going to be more efficient at keeping your car cool. Essentially, you have larger surface area for the ambient air to travel through. And because of that, it helps reduce those temperatures a little bit more than you would. So, I mean, it's really just going to help if you're taking your car out and you're beating on it a little bit, or maybe you're just sitting in traffic and you can at least get a little more surface area for that hot summer air to travel through to help keep that cool and a little bit cooler. But that's all I got for you guys. These modifications will 100% help improve the longevity of your car. And with, so let's just, let's just wrap the video up. You know, we'll do the thing. We'll do the stuff in the thing. So with that, this video is quick and to the point. I did not want to spend too much time just talking about all these things that we've kind of touched on in the past, but I did want to just make one video encompassing all of those longevity modifications. So that way you're not jumping from one video to the next, to the next, to the next throughout my videos to try to find uh, just all what you need. So we're centralizing everything right here. So those are all of the good longevity modifications that will help keep your EJ 
running longer and uh, some of those applicable mods being to your FA, which will also help with the longevity of your car. So with that, uh, you guys know what to do. If you like this video or if it was beneficial to you, go ahead and tap that like button. Go ahead, turn it blue, just like the car behind me. And if you guys are not already and you wanna be, you can uh, subscribe to the channel down here by the front wheel tonight. And with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies.